we have to think about well, what actions can bring forward the positive tipping point, accepting that we need to be going more than five times faster than we are at decarbonising the economy. Luckily, there's a bunch of answers as to how each of us have got not just skin in the game, but agency to do something about this. So at the most basic level, maybe we can be an adopter of a new behaviour, eating less meat, or a new technology, an EV, solar panels on our roofs, whatever. But on top of that, the story of positive tipping points that have already happened, like the fact that Norway, the car market's tipped entirely to EVs, or the great rise of offshore wind power that, that starts out of Denmark, or even in the UK case, the precipitous decline and shutdown of coal burning. All of these, if you trace the story back far enough, start with social activists of some kind and or innovators. It's a great story in the Norway case because it's members of the pop band AHA, who people as old as me <laughs> will remember, and their architecture friend Harold Rosvik and their environmentalist friend Frederick Haug, who in 1989 start drawing attention to the possibility of an EV tipping point in Norway and have basically come up with nine policy demands to the Norwegian government to try and incentivise EV uptake. <laughs> so it was a long journey to the eventual tipping point, which is in about 2012 in Norway. But it's fascinating to see how, at heart, a very small group of people can ultimately trigger phenomenal scale of change.